Uh, there's always a slight tension in the room until I address the cardigan. Um, it's this one, isn't it? I'm wearing it. I know I'm wearing it. Uh, it didn't jump on me. Uh, I don't wear this for the gig, just to calm you down. I, uh, I just wear this to come out in. I call this the establisher. Uh, just lets the men in the room know that I'm the alpha. Don't any trouble. Sometimes men think they might have a little heckle at these gigs and they see that and they think, holy shit, that guy's got no dignity. I can't wear it for the gig, it gets too hot. Uh, obviously, temperature-wise for me, and let's be honest, sexually for some of you. Uh, so the first thing that happens is I take it off, which is about as sexy as it sounds. Uh, thank you. Uh, got another one underneath for the gig, obviously. <laughs> Didn't want you thinking I wasn't gonna wear one. <laughs> now, if I hang that there, I'm gonna warp the collar. Um, <laughs> I don't suppose anyone's brought a travel coat hanger with them, have they? <laughs> I have, of course. <laughs> well, let's hang it that way. Turn it round so you get the benefit. <laughs> Had to wait for a man to die to get that cardigan, so might as well get my money's worth. By which I mean I bought it from a charity shop. I didn't see him wearing it and just follow him until he gave up. Well, I'll tell you what, Blackpool, if you're going to applaud a coat hanger, you just might have a good evening tonight. That, that hopefully, is not the highlight of the show. Uh, the show's called The Old Man, for, for obvious reasons. Uh, I'm a cardigan-wearing gentleman. Uh, I wear them all year as well, in case you're wondering. I'm not one of these Christmas dicks. <laughs> Put one on for a Weatherspoon's pub crawl and think you've got a personality all of a sudden. <laughs> wear mine all year round. There's a number of other things that make me an old man. Uh, I play Countdown for a living. Don't quite know how I'm getting away with that. Uh, I always know where the nearest toilet is. I secretly prefer to use my own, which obviously makes touring quite difficult. <laughs> be away for weeks sometimes, saving it up. <laughs> Inside, obviously, I don't shit in envelopes and keep them in the car door. <laughs> Chronological, if you're interested. You've got to have a system when you file an imaginary shit in an imaginary car door. Uh, but she agreed to marry me. We had a lovely wedding day. People always say to you, oh, wedding day is one of the best days of your life. And you'll know if you're planning a wedding, it really is. Uh, and a reason the wedding day is one of the best days of your life is, for me, that's the day that, as a couple, you really stop planning a wedding. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I'm a fan of admin, but that pushed me to the very brink. It really did. <laughs> I didn't know you had to plan everything. Why would I pick the flowers? I don't know about flowers, and I'll let you in on a secret, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't care if my wife says to me, do you remember Mark and Becky's wedding? I don't say, remember it, those chrysanthemum. <laughs> I'll tell you what I remember about every wedding I've ever been to. What time the bar opened and how much a pint was. That is, <laughs> wedding's a party, innit? Get everyone you love in a room and get them drunk. It's that simple, you know. Who are these people keeping the bar shut till after dinner? Are you worried people are going to have fun too early? Get the bar open. Oh, don't worry, there's a bottle of each on the table at dinner. Is there? Lovely, nice, warm bottle of white wine between 12 of us. <laughs> that will lube up the chit-chat. Perhaps when you get back from the honeymoon, we'll have a quick chinwag about how interesting you think your friends are. <laughs> Just get the bar open, I don't understand. There's so much rigmarole around weddings that doesn't need to be there. Do you know what I mean? I didn't want, I didn't want to cut the cake. I don't understand why in the 21st century we're still making a display. I think people have seen cake now. You don't need to call them back in the room. Get in there, they're gonna slice up a fruit loaf. Holy shit! <laughs> don't forget your camera. Oh yeah, better get a picture. No one's gonna believe this. <laughs> and then they slice the cake, live! Just slice the cake, hand it out. No one's gonna eat the fucking thing anyway, let's be honest. <laughs> I didn't want any, uh, I didn't want any dancing. I didn't want a first dance. I didn't want a dance floor. I didn't want any of that. I don't like dancing. I think it's for arrogant people who can't communicate verbally. <laughs> think, just stand still and enjoy the music. What's wrong with you people skipping around all over the place? You should be punished. You get put on telly in sequins. You should be masking tape to the floor. <laughs> I'm going to put an album on now and I want you to try and enjoy that cerebrally with the rest of us. <laughs> skipping around like a prick. They're the same people who sing along to music that's in their headphones. Those assholes. Just, <laughs> oh, sorry, was I too in the vibe? No, you're a prick. <laughs> that's the main problem I'm having with you there. <laughs> I didn't want any dancing, I don't like it, you know. I'll be honest with you, I can't think of a punishment worse than you getting everybody I love in a room, making them form a circle and making me dance in the middle of it. <laughs> I wouldn't do that any day of my life, let alone the one day I've paid for all of these pricks to have dinner. <laughs> What a curious thank you that is. That was a lovely meal. Now dance for your grandma. <laughs>
I'd rather they watch this consummate the wedding. I'm not going to lie to you. I've been happy a tap in a champagne glass. Do you want to come upstairs? We're going to have the first shag now. <laughs> Everybody up. Come on. Family occasion, this. Bring your cameras. <laughs> Would have been quicker as well, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Four minutes, that song was. Four minutes. And I had to audition for that in my own house. She never seen me dance, my wife. We don't go dancing, you see, in the same way we don't go pole vaulting of a weekend. <laughs> Not an activity we share, so she just stopped the telly one afternoon and went, show me your dancing, so I know what we're working with. Middle of the afternoon, no music on, I had to start. <laughs> is, is it this? She was really staring at me like that. I thought, bloody hell, I'm nailing this. <laughs> she spoke up after a couple of hours. She said, um, <laughs> she said, what, why are your shoulders like that? I said, I'm not even thinking about my bloody shoulders. I said, why aren't you looking at this? I'm doing all of that, you know. Left foot, bounce. Right foot, bounce. She said, no, you need to move your shoulders as well, John. I said, well, I can do, but something else will stop. <laughs> said, There's just a limit to how many body parts I can be thinking about at the same time. And she said, I know that, John. Um, <laughs> I still don't understand that one. <laughs> so the agreement was that we would hold each other and sway like that. That was the agreement. And she whispered into my ear halfway through the dance. She said, and I'll never forget this, stop spinning, you're making me feel sick. <laughs> I was going too fast, apparently, but that's her fault for not giving me an RPM, you know. <laughs> I need facts and figures. I knew something was wrong when I felt her feet lift off the ground. I thought, <laughs> a bit too much centrifugal force on this. It's more of a twizzer than a dance, but I was having such fun at that point. Uh, and that's when I'll start checking my phone. I'll get my phone out and I'll check my Twitter and I, I'm not going to lie to you, all the abuse that comes in, I screen grab it and I keep it in a folder on my phone uh, just in case I ever develop any self-esteem, you know. <laughs> Some days I wake up, I think, do you know what, I feel all right about myself. I ever read of that, I think, oh, no, you're awful, you're awful. <laughs> I show them to my kids when they're older. Look how much people used to hate your daddy. <laughs> what did you do to upset them, Dad? So, oh, mostly anagrams towards the end. <laughs> 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 so... Oh, I, I have usually got it up ready, and that's not a sentence I've fucking used in my life. Um, <laughs> uh, there we go. So this is the sort of thing I'm looking for. Now, I'll show you that. I know you're not going to be able to read that, but I only show you it so you know it's real, right? I don't want you to think I've made this up, because some of this language is quite ripe, uh, and I would hate for you to think I've made this up to upset you. This is the sort of conversation two lads will have about me of an evening, and they copy me in in case I'm curious. So this one come in last year, it starts off, a guy called Bob, about 10 o'clock, he tweets me, he says, I've never liked John Richardson. <laughs> right, that's a good start, isn't it? Never. Because never's not just me as a comedian, is it? Never's my whole life. <laughs> Never suggests, like, even when I was a kid, this guy was just walking up and down his corridor. Oh, there's a little prick somewhere. <laughs> there's a little Super Mario Brothers cardigan on, I bet he's down at the playground checking for stones in a sandpit so no one gets hurt at playtime. <laughs> He's got me bang on, to be fair. Um, he says, I've never liked John Richardson. Imagine the first day he saw me on telly. Poor bastard, hard day at work, sits down with his tea, puts the telly on. You are shitting me. <laughs> How many years have I been telling you I hate this prick, Margaret? <laughs> All your life, Bob. All my life, Margaret! <laughs> Finally had enough last year, he tweets me, he says, I've never liked John Richardson, he's about as funny as. Right, and these are always my favourites, because then you get a funny little image, and if you've not heard it before, it makes you laugh, they'll generally say something like, he's about as funny as a shit on a bouncy castle. And <laughs> you can't help but laugh if you haven't... It's instantly picturable, isn't it? Just <laughs> everyone at the fair having a good old bounce like that. Someone clocks the turd on that front edge. <laughs> Selfishly, they think, well, I'll just bounce away from it. I'll just bounce away from it. <laughs> of course, because of the physics, it chases after him, doesn't it? <laughs> Pretty soon, they're all pinned up on that back wall. Stop bouncing, Vicar! Stop bouncing! <laughs> you can't stop bouncing, can you? You throw yourself down, you'll only bounce higher. <laughs> they're up higher, the turds up higher. It's nutting, people, now. Just get it off me! <laughs> I'm done with that image there. If you enjoyed it, carry it on in your own leisure. <laughs> I've never worked out how the turd gets off the bouncy castle. Do get back to me. I don't know if someone volleys it off like that. Or <laughs> maybe someone scoops it up, a hero takes it on the chest, literally. <laughs> Tries to get it out of there. Anyway, we don't know. We don't know. He didn't go with that anyway. He went a different direction, Bob. He says, I've never liked John Richardson. He's about as funny as a Yugoslavian rapist. <laughs> yeah. 
It gets that reaction everywhere, so don't feel bad. <laughs> a few sort of shocked whoops there, and some people start laughing and think, oh, shit, no-one else is laughing, I probably shouldn't. <laughs> and someone laughs too loud and too early, as if to say, oh, I forgot I'd written that. <laughs> Now, obviously, the second work is gruesome, isn't it? The second word's horrific, he's, he's trying to be brutal there, but it's the first one, isn't it? It's that first word, you think, well, where do the Yugoslavians come into this? <laughs> I was looking at that, thinking there hasn't been a Yugoslavia since the early 90s. <laughs> he must have Googled, where are the least funny rapists? <laughs> I guess he's been linked to a survey from some time in the 80s, you know, when that sort of thing didn't seem so deplorable, and he's thought, well, I'll just go with the stats as given. So he sent that in. <laughs> I was staring at that for ages, thinking I'm going to have to reply to him. Just say, look, Bob, I know you don't like me, but can I ask why you said Yugoslavian? Because I can't sleep. <laughs> I didn't get a chance anyway, mate. Mel replies. So Mel's obviously up. He's seen that message and he gets all excited. He's like, oh, we're hating someone. Yeah! I was nearly going to go to bed. I'd have missed this. Right, so he's all excited. He's got a slight problem, Mel, that he doesn't know who I am. Uh... <laughs> Shouldn't stop him hating me, should it? So his first message is just a fact-finding mission. He says to Bob, he says, which one's John Richardson? Right, it's not that upsetting, really, that, is it? No apostrophe S in ones, but I didn't get into that. <laughs> you know, I'll be honest, there's bigger trouble coming for me than his spelling and grammar. <laughs> which is otherwise impeccable, I have to say. Capital W, capital J-R. Question mark with a double space. You don't see a lot of that. No H in my John. I've got mates who can't remember that. So... The guy can obviously spell, he just doesn't use apostrophes, which suggests there's some other reason he's not using them. I start to think, well, maybe he's worried we're going to run out. <laughs> maybe he's sick of going in the butchers, seeing sausages with an apostrophe S. You know, most of us just move on, not Mel. He's looking at that thinking, stop bloody wasting them. <laughs> stop wasting them, we're going to run out. Right, I'm not putting mine on thin tonight, I'll put them down in basement. Yeah, they'll all come round Mel's house, come the shortage. Mel, can I have one of your apostrophes? I'll say, no, you should have looked after your own. <laughs> Now he's got a basement full of them, and they just waist high. He gets naked once a month and just slides into them like that. <laughs> Rubs them all over his nipples. So, who possesses all the possessives? You do, Melvin. You do. Oh, bloody hell, what's that? That's a comma. That shouldn't be down here. <laughs> that should be over there in comma draw 64. <laughs> don't, don't, please. Don't. You'll watch it back and you'll hate yourself for clapping at that. You really will. <laughs> so anyway, he says, to, he says to Bob, he says, which one's John Richardson? The little gay-looking cunt. <laughs> you laugh till you're finished, by all means, you... <laughs> Can I thank you there for making that the longest laugh of the night so far? That's really... Lovely to come to Blackpool and have them unite as one to say, well, that is bang on, that really is. <laughs> as a four-word description of your work, John, that is absolutely perfect. I mean, you're right, Bob rounds a whole chat off, he says, that's the one, that's him. <laughs> Naturally. I screen grab that, I look at it every day, and every day it cheers me up, because those are real men. Those are actual men who exist, and that is a part of their life. They're going to die one day, and that conversation is a part of their life. And I start to think, maybe they hate me in person now. You know, like any hobby, it starts online, you get into it. Maybe now they meet up at weekends, and their wives make them a little pat lunch. Are you off hating Bob? They go, yeah! <laughs> who are you hating this weekend? Just, 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 just. <laughs> You've always hated him, haven't you? Yes, since you was a kid, I fucking hated him. <laughs> Where are you hating him this weekend? At the seaside. <laughs> meet up on the special bench they've arranged to meet up and they eat the sandwiches and hate me for a bit. I ate his shoes. Yeah, good one, Bob. And his eyebrows. Yeah, good one, Mel. <laughs> eat their sandwiches and then they drink their drink and it's all finished. They probably hang around for another hour or two just looking out to see because sometimes their little fingers touch just there and they never mention it, but it's electric for the pair of them. It really is. That's Bob and Mel, you know, and, and, and the reality is I don't let tweets like that upset me because I'm never going to meet a mama. And if I did, they'd probably be nice to me because that's what people are like, the cowards. And I know that because I know how I feel when I beat my horn and someone stops their car. I shit my pants. <laughs> <laughs> I shit my pants and I apologise and I say it was probably my fault. You didn't need to indicate it should have been clear why you were reversing round that roundabout. <laughs> <laughs> 